Well, good morning. Happy Thanksgiving to you. A few days late. It's Thanksgiving weekend. It's Gratitude Sunday. I thought before we jump into the sermon today, this would be an appropriate response for us as a congregation to let's give thanks to our staff and team and volunteers and workers here at Hope Church. Can we do that? I was, I was thinking coming in, when we came into the building, the, the heat was on, the lights were on, um, there was graphics, there was sound, there was a place you could drop off your children if you needed to do that, that's secure, they created curriculum, they have workers, they have, that's a job, that's a job, there's a... Uh, our youth department, our ladies department, our worship team, aren't they awesome? You know, they didn't just show up this morning and play for the first time. They've practiced, they've gone, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of behind the scenes. And then I can go into, you think, well, that's Sunday. All through the week, there's things going on, there's planning, there's lots going on. Aren't you thankful that all you have to do is show up? Isn't that great? And we're the beneficiaries, and so we thank you, our pastors, All of our team, we thank you guys for what you do day in and day out. If you've ever had a shut-in visit, how many are thankful for that? How many thank you? You didn't have to do it. There was somebody else that did. Well, you need to get involved. No, I'm kidding. We, We love you guys, and thank you for that. What a great way to start Gratitude Sunday. It's Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving, don't you? It's one of my favorite holidays. It helps me be intentional about reflecting back on the goodness of God and His faithfulness and all the things the Lord's done for me. But there's also other things. There's football. We won't mention any scores today. But there's shopping, Black Friday shopping. How many of you like to shop? Boo. No, okay. There is uh, fellowship, family, friends getting together. Sometimes you hadn't seen them since last Thanksgiving. I mean, it's a lot going on. But you know what one of my favorites is? Guess. Food, right, food. I love food. I mean, it's, it's further down the list than the things that I just mentioned, but I love food. And let me tell you why I like food around the holidays and specifically Thanksgiving. Not only is it delicious and it's really good, but in our house, we prepare recipes that my parents prepared when I was growing up as a child. And, and my wife's parents prepared. And so when we get together, it's not only tasty and really good, it kind of takes you back. You know what I'm talking about? takes you back to good times, and um, I'm just so, I, I love Thanksgiving. It really is warm. Uh, I love food. Let me say one more thing about food, and then we'll get into the message. <laughs> I, I like, anybody ever watch the Food Channel on TV? I'm not doing a commercial for them, but there's a couple of shows. They're kind of similar, but they will, um, they'll take you to a specific restaurant that specializes in this one dish that's really better than you can get at any place else in the world. I mean, it's fantastic. And they take you back into the kitchen, and they start showing you how to make that thing, right? There's this flour, and then you put in a cup of this and a pinch of that. And my wife's usually writing as fast as she can, and I'm going, it can't keep up anyway. Just listen. And, and, and they list all this stuff, and then there's... They get to the one thing that differentiates them from everybody else that makes them a great restaurant. Tell me what that is. It's the the secret ingredient. But they don't ever tell you. That's right. It's the secret ingredient, but they don't ever tell you what that secret ingredient is. But let me tell you about the secret ingredient. It's the thing. It's one. If you ever had a recipe that has a secret ingredient and somebody shares it with you, you go... That doesn't sound like that goes with that dish. That's something I really wasn't expecting, but it takes an ordinary dish to an extraordinary dish just with a little sprinkling in of the secret ingredient. So today, guess what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about the secret ingredient. And it's actually not that big a secret. The Lord shares this with us in black and white in the scripture, but in context of other disciplines within our life, you might look at it and say, that doesn't look like that fits here. That's a, that doesn't look, but when you add in the secret ingredient, it makes it not only an ordinary discipline, it makes it extraordinary in the outcomes that you see. How many of you know what the ingredient is? Somebody tell me. What Sunday is today? It's Gratitude Sunday. We're going to talk about thankfulness and gratitude. 
Thankfulness and gratitude. Now, we're going to jump, and I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures real, real fast. And let me just tell you up front, the scriptures were not picked because they're thankfulness verses. They were picked because they're throughout scripture, and it's really talking about something else. But then he throws in the secret ingredient to tell you how to escalate the outcome of that something else that he's talking about. And what it is that he's throwing in is gratitude and thankfulness. So let's just start. Uh, Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, what's the next phrase? Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and all for God is a consuming fire. How many of you like to hear about the kingdom and God's a consuming fire and revival and it's on the way? And then in, right in the middle of all that, he says, let us be thankful. Huh. Well, there's a little secret ingredient for you. The next one is Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. How many of you want to get a hold of that? Don't be anxious about everything, anything, but by prayer and supplication or petition. And then the next phrase says what? With thanksgiving... Present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So here we are praying. Here we are wanting to not be anxious. He's saying, pray, bring your petitions, come to me. I'm going to help you out. And then he puts in this secret ingredient. It says, with thanksgiving. Hmm. How many of you know when you're in a place which you're calling on God with petitions, it's not always the time you feel like giving thanksgiving? It's usually, Lord, help. But there it is, a secret ingredient. Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Now, now we're talking about peace. I mean, you want peace in your life. Here's the next phrase. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell with you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So here we are again. We're worshiping. We're giving thanks, weaving it all the way through. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. Be filled with the Spirit. How many of you like the Spirit-filled life? I think it's important. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart always. And then look at the next phrase, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God our Father, God and Father. Psalm 107.1, O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Right in the middle of talking about love, he comes in and says, Give thanks to the Lord. Colossians 4, 2, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So there's another scripture. We're supposed to be steadfast in prayer. It's these disciplines that we know we're supposed to do. How many of you know you're supposed to be thankful? Let's just make this easy, right? This would be a good Sunday to talk about that. We know it, but now we see there's this secret ingredient that if you add it into these times that it may not fit, it will add in. So if we're to add this ingredient of thankfulness into our daily lives, where do we begin? How do we, we know we're supposed to do it, so how do we start doing that? Well, I'm going to share with you six habits, okay? They're not one thing you do, they're habits you get into. Six habits that will make you become more thankful, more grateful. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Regularly practice giving thanks. <laughs> that was deep, wasn't it? If you want to be more thankful, you don't have to do it. You have to do it regularly. You have to regularly practice giving thanks. You should have a habit of expressing gratitude. Thankfulness rather than criticism should be our default position. Now, you know what? That's hard. You know, by nature, criticism is kind of our default position. Now, I know not for all of you. Um, how many of you have a little card on your refrigerator that says, I can't believe that guy did that to me. I'll never forgive him. You don't have that on your refrigerator, do you? Because that comes natural. Nobody even has to remind you. I went through this, and I'll never forget it. But instead, we got a thing that says, thank the Lord for all things. You know, be thankful. That's what's on the, car, on the refrigerator. Our natural default, though, is the other way. And so we have to retrain our thinking so that we default towards gratitude instead of criticism. When you see something good in life, point it out. Thank God for it. 
We all complain occasionally, but practice responding to your own complaining by finding things in it that you can be thankful for. And what you do is you'll rewire your brain. Regularly practice giving thanks. Number two, express gratitude regardless of the situation. Mm, Now it's getting a little heavier here. Paul tells us in Thessalonians um, to give thanks in all circumstances because God wills it. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Not just the good circumstances, all circumstances. Why? Because we don't ever see the full picture. We don't see the beginning from the end. We only see where we are right now. And we start to interpret it with our own interpretation. Don't look, we, have to, we can't look at every situation and clearly understand why it's happening. We only know that God's at work, that he's sovereign, he's for you and not against you. He's causing things to work together for your good. And so even when you don't see it, begin to practice being thankful. Regardless of what's happening, you can thank God for his presence. Um, We rise above a situation when we purposefully look for what God is doing in the middle of it. You know, sometimes when you get to the other end, you can look back and you feel really spiritual when you go, whew, thank you that I came through that, Jesus. But when you're in the middle of it, what are we saying? Where are you? Why'd you do this to me? What's going on? That's the time we have to practice focusing gratitude regardless of the situation. Number three, another habit we're going to get into. Praise God when all is well. Hmm. You know, usually we praise God when we come through something, right? But you know, he's the God of green pastures and still waters. How many of you think are going good right now? You had a good weekend? Had a big meal? You've had a long weekend off of work? How many of you think God is good? Yeah, all the time. Now, how many of you are going back to work Monday? Oh, me. See how, we, how you can easily default into thinking another way, but you have to choose that I'm going to be grateful regardless and recognize God and the good things. We don't see that he protects us. He guides us along the way. We experience those uh, green pastures and still waters. Number four, fourth practice, learn to see how bad experiences can produce good outcomes. Now, I don't, add, I don't pray, Lord, give me patience, because <laughs> you have to go through stuff to get patience, right? So don't pray for stuff like that. But, you know, when you go through things, realize the Lord's in control, and he is developing in you things that otherwise couldn't be developed. And when you get at the, you know, when you've been through a really hard time, um, people can't take that away from you. I say all the time, have you ever been healed before? I mean, really, not just I bruised my knee, and, but I mean... The Lord's touched you something serious. Those people had your hand up. Let me see it one more time so I know you're not asleep. Look around the room. Okay, lots of people. Now, if I was to pick one of you that had your hand up, do you think that I could convince them that God doesn't heal? Can't convince them, right? Because they have life evidence. They're, they're convinced. There's nothing that I can do about it. And so what we want to do is practice knowing that when you go through those difficult circumstances, he's right there with you, and, you, and you're going to have a good outcome. Um, number four, number five, sorry, uh, make gratitude a part of your interaction with other people. Amen. Gratitude should impact both our relationship with God and our relationship with people. Rick Warren once said, to appreciate means to raise in value, right? So not only is that true of things, but it's also true of people. When you interact um, and you appreciate somebody, you're literally raising their value, You ought to appreciate people because it increases their self-worth. Make it a regular practice for you to be appreciating people. And you know who we usually appreciate the least? Those that are the closest to us. Isn't that unfortunate? But you can decide today and make it a habit going forward um, to say, thank you. Thank you what you do. Now, it's it's a big thing now. If you were, well, maybe it's been a long time, not just now, but if you see veterans, you know, and they tell you, you say, thank you for your service, right? And so I always thought that was kind of neat. So now when I see, even if they're complete strangers, if they got a hat on or they got something, I'll go up to them and I'll say, you know, I want to thank you for your service, even though I don't know them. And a lot of times they'll weep. I mean, they're, they're so, um, they've had a void where they haven't been appreciated for what they've been through. And when you do that, well, that's a real example, but you know what? Your partner's the same way. <laughs> yes. 
If you'll every now and then say, thank you for your service, you know what? They'll probably weep if you do. But in reality, we need to be grateful people towards those that are around us, all people. Increasing their self-worth, appreciating them, raising them in value. Number six, the last one, uh, learn or lean into the strength that gratitude provides. Lead into the strength. Um, I know a lot of people who've had extremely tough situations, and on the other side of it, they're more grateful than the people that haven't had those. And so, again, I'm not wishing bad things on you. I'm saying be grateful now, and sometimes you can avoid some of those things. So those are six practices. Thanksgiving's like a superpower. It's a secret ingredient and enables us to see past our experiences and embrace how God's moving. Not only uh, are thankful people able to draw strength from gratitude, but they're also able to empower others, those around you. When you're a grateful person, you know, um, it's better for people to be glad and thankful when you're coming than when you're going. You know some of those? All right, so some of you are saying, okay, you've convinced me that gratitude's important, but it's hard, especially when my circumstances are going south. How do I step up then? If I got these habits I want to do, but how do I, in practical ways, begin to institute gratitude and thankfulness in my, in my life? So I wrote down four practices, and that we're going to wrap up. Are you excited? Yes. See, so you're going, this will be the shortest sermon we've had. So four practices, if you'll start incorporating them now, they'll help you develop habits of gratitude, and you'll have the secret ingredient to face things when it comes. Here's the first one. You ready? Keep a journal. Keep a journal. Now, if you're like me, I'm not a big journaling guy because it's work and I'm lazy. My wife journals. She writes. Uh, but here's, here's what I know. When you write something down, it's powerful. It's powerful. Uh, you, th you think about um, Habakkuk, you know, when he was talking about vision. You know, he knew it and he had the vision, but he said the, the Scripture says he to write it down so that others can run with it. Right? And so in the same way, uh, you know why that is? Because he wasn't always going to be around. In the same way, when you come against difficult situations, if you have something written down, you can reflect back on it. Let me ask you again. How many of you had a great Thanksgiving weekend? It's just been nice to be off, be with family, to do all those things. How many of you know that about Wednesday of this next week, you're going to forget all about that? <laughs> Depends on who you work with, but... About Wednesday, Thursday, it's like, was that last week was Thanksgiving? And then three weeks from now, you're going to be thinking towards Christmas. I got to get, in the, get ready and get in the hamster wheel again. And, I, and so we go from event to event, but in between. But if you will write down, when you recognize the goodness of God, here's where the Lord came through for me. I'm going to write this down. If you'll keep a record of it, then when you're going through that difficult time, you'll have something you can reflect back on. You read that journal and you go, hey, I can encourage myself in the Lord. If he did it here, he'll do it there. Let me tell you how that works in my house. So um, my wife and I, many years ago when we were much younger, we were on staff at a church. We got paid once a month. We had children. We were on a pastor's salary. And whew, um, you ever gotten to the end of your money but not the end of the month? You ever lived there before? We lived there, and, I, and we got to there one month, and I was like, Jesus, help us. You know, Lord, and the Lord's good. I mean, he was good. He, you know, I'm, I'm not, but I, it's just the truth. I was like, Lord, I've paid all my bills. We got groceries except for this one bill, and it's uh, $24.95. Now, how many of you think that's going to break the bank, $24? You go, in the scheme of things, but let me tell you, it was a mountain at the time, $24.95, and I had, and I'm not getting paid for a few more days, and you got diapers and formula and all that stuff, and it's like, Lord, Jesus, help me. What are we going to do? Well, this is, I told you this a long time ago, this is the first time that State Farm started giving refunds if you didn't have any accidents. And I went to the mailbox. The day that I said that prayer to him, I went to the mailbox, and I opened up, and there's this envelope from State Farm, rebate for no accidents, $25. So I said, Lord, I needed $24.95. He gave me $25. You might go, well, you know. You know, I didn't go, well. I went, woohoo! Yeah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Yes. I paid the bill. I was excited. But you know what else I did? I made a photocopy of that check. 
You think I'm joking, but I'm not. I put a photocopy of it in a file in my drawer because next time it wasn't $25, it was another amount. And I said, Lord, let me just show you, devil. And I pulled that check out and I said, he did it this time. He can do it again. If you will document and journal of the goodness of God when things are good, when things are not so good, you'll have a record to fall back on. And it doesn't matter how small it is. How many of you know some of the smallest things that God does for you are the most significant in the time that you need them? There was another time, and then we'll move on. It was probably 10 years ago. I was at the top of my game. I'd just gotten a promotion at work. Uh, Everything was going good until I had a lump that showed up on my neck. Some of you know my testimony. It was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, somewhere between stage three and four cancer, and it came on really fast and really scary. And I said, oh, man. And I went to Mary Black, and I won't bore you with all the details, but it wasn't good, and my frame of mind was not great. And I was laying in the bed. they just drawn two liters of liquid off of one of my lungs, and I was laying in the bed going, Uh, I pray for people. I'm a pastor. I'm supposed to be on the other side of the rail, not this side, Lord. Have you forgotten? Then he took me back to a missions trip a few years earlier when we were in Russia, and a lady came forward, an elderly lady came forward, and she didn't speak English, and I didn't speak Russian, and we didn't have an interpreter. The interpreter was two people over. She came forward, and I said, Can I pray for you now like we do in altar ministry? Can I pray for you? And she took my hand, and she goes, "Mm." And on her side, she had, it was about the size of a cantaloupe on the outside of her body that you could feel through her clothes. And I said, okay, we're going to pray. And there's, I mean, there's 500, you know, there's a whole bunch of people around. This wasn't anything hokey. But so we're sitting here and I'm thinking, well, she doesn't understand English and I don't understand Russian, so I'm just going to pray in the spirit. So I just began to pray in the spirit. And as I prayed, it was like a water balloon that went, disappeared in my hand. And I was like, woo. I'd like to tell you it's because I was so prayed up and spiritual, but it surprised me as much as it did you today. But I said, thank you, Lord. I was so full of faith. I said, sit her down over here in a few minutes, bring her back to make sure I didn't push something in. It's going to pop back out, you know. (laughs) But it wasn't. The Lord fully healed her. It was a miracle. It was a, I mean, it wasn't I pray and six months later she was better and I got the report. It was right there. It changed my life, Right. So here's a few years later, I'm laying in the bed at Mary Black, and I'm going, Lord, what's going on here? What's up with this? And you know what he spoke to me? If I can take care of a cantaloupe over in Russia, I can take care of a golf ball here in Spartanburg. And so my attitude changed, and gratitude moved in, and I I started with her. Lord, thank you for changing that lady's life. And if you can change her life, You've changed my life. You've taken care of me. I remember that check in the drawer at home. I remember I could sit here for the next hour and tell you of real life stories where the Lord came through. And when you begin to rehearse those things, something changes within you. And the secret ingredient of gratitude moves in and it shoes away the enemy like that. And so second practice is, our first practice is keep a journal. Write things down. Number two, you ready? Number two is develop your vocabulary. In other words, your words have power. Your words have power. Um, People that practice gratefulness, they face the same challenges that you do. They simply practice recognizing their source and reciting words of gratitude more than you do. They go through the same things we do. They just respond differently. And when you begin to let loose your words, your language matters. You have to be mindful of your words. The more strongly you label things, the more likely you'll cultivate them into your spirit, good or bad. So begin to speak truth. Begin to speak life. Don't let words come out of your mouth like always and never. You're comparing a situation to others, and you really don't even have those full details. And what happens is you get into the quicksand of comparison. And it won't result in thankfulness. It will result in things where you don't want to go, people you don't want to be. So here's some things to remember. Number one, this is still under developing your vocabulary. Guard your inward words as much as your outward words. Can I just share with you about that? Sometimes, here's how I used to respond. 
And then the Lord worked in my heart, and I moved over here, and I said things like this. I shouldn't say this, but... Blah, 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 blah. And then I'd say it again. And then I got over to here, growing in the Lord, trusting Him, and I said, I shouldn't say this, and I'm not. Lord, I'm going to hold my words. That's a good place to be. The problem is, is that's your outward words. And that's a good start because words have power. We're going to see the Scripture in a minute. But there's also these inward words that we have. We speak to ourselves. Maybe somebody spoke them over you when you were young. Maybe somebody spoke something different, and that's the way you interpret it that they meant when they said that, and they really didn't even say that. But you've now got this story you're telling yourself inside. And so whenever anything happens, you begin speaking words to yourself that aren't the words that are going to result in gratitude and thankfulness. Watch your vocabulary. I know you, you've been in this church for a little while. You've heard this before. This isn't a new concept, but here's what's new. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. If you want to live with the secret ingredient of gratitude working, then you can't empower uh, the negative against you. Now, you know, you say, well, it's not as simple as just changing your words. You're right. It's not that simple. But you're never going to change anything else until you start changing your words. It's the place to start. Proverbs 18, 21. I'm all, you know the, the scripture. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, but those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Hmm. Anybody ever said anything and go, <coughs> I wish I could pull that back? Man, if you've been here more than five minutes, you've done that. So here's one of the takeaways of today. What are some practical things that I can do? One of them is I've got to change my vocabulary. I can't just, well, they are like that, so I'm just going to say it. I got, you know, the more, I, I got a birthday coming up, and I'm becoming more senior than I was before. <laughs> I'll just stop there. But the more seasoned we get, we feel like we've earned the right to say whatever we want to. You know what? That's not correct for my unseasoned, my seasoned friends out there. Your words have consequences. Speak to yourself inwardly and to others outwardly with words of grace. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 in the Amplified. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So it's not only a good practice, it's God's will. You know, we think that's just for teenagers and young adults. They want to know what the will of God is. How many of you know what the will of God is for your life? Nobody? Oh, there's two back there. Okay, my hand's up too. I want to know. I want to know what the will of God is for my life. I don't want to know. I don't want to get set on something once that I think it's it for the rest of my life. He might make some changes along the way. He may have new things for us to do. So I need to always be seeking and open. Lord, what's your will? What's your will for today? What's your, who are you going to bring me in contact with that I didn't know was going to be... Give me some divine interventions, you know, all that stuff. But here's one thing we know his will is to give thanks, to give thanks always. So we're going to develop our vocabulary. Your words will empower what comes to you and through you. Number three, here's our third. We're only going to do four. Here's number three, keep focus, okay? If you want to be a thankful person, you have to keep focus. Avoid being constantly distracted. And you go, me? Yes. Put your phone down. I'm talking to you. Yes. We can't be distracted. Thankful people usually refuse to rehash the bad stuff that happened in the past. They don't worry about all the awful things that could happen to them in the future. They're in the present. They're in the moment. They're not living by what they see on their phone or on TV. They focus on the good stuff happening around them, knowing that God is in control. Now, I'm not saying you've got to put your phone away. I'm just saying put it away some. Keep your focus, and where you spend time needs to be with God. Spend time in the life-giving presence of God. I love, I here she is right here. I'm not pointing people out, but I love when we do worship, and my friends down here engage in worship. You know why? You know what the rest of us are doing? We're thinking, I wish I could do that, but either I'm embarrassed or my joints don't work like that. But don't you wish you could just be uninhibited and worship before the Lord? Well, I used to, um, I used to think, well, all oh, that's not necessary. I can worship in my heart. 
And that's true, but you can worship better if you'll engage. You know why? Because you'll remember. It's the same as writing something down. When you take action, when you attach an action, now you may not be able to get down on your knees when we have prayer time. But if you'll engage to the degree that you can and not just give yourself an excuse not to do anything, the way you engage will make it stick with you longer. And when it sticks with you, when difficult times come, you'll have something to pull on again. Right? Um, Spend time carving out time with Him, quiet times in the Word, times of worship between just you and the Savior, times in church, preaching to the choir because you guys are here, right? But all those are times that you keep your focus on what's the most important. Be intentional about it. All right, number four. Um, Guard your health. You say, guard your health. Don't you mean guard your heart? Yeah, guard your heart, but... We're talking about practical things that keep you grateful. Guard your health. Thanksgiving and physical health tend to work together. Healthy people are usually grateful and positive, and then positivity tends to lead to healthy decisions. And the opposite is true, too. You let your health go to... Now, okay, I'm, I'm being transparent with you here, right? I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's important that you get enough sleep. Yeah. Okay, if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to be deprived and you're not going to be grateful. Things are going to agitate you and you're going to be picking and critical and because you don't have enough sleep. Eat right. Exercise. Endorphins. All that stuff's important and it happens when you're guarding your health. And I'm not up here giving you, I'm not selling gym memberships after it's over. I'm not... I'm not down on you if you're not where you want to be. I'm just saying there's a direct connect. God made us body, soul, and spirit, and there's a connect between all three of those, right? You can't live by your emotions because if you do, you're not going to do well. But when I say that, you also can't disconnect your emotions. If you do, God, that's part of how God made you. See, that's, I, 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 you can ask my wife. I'm a pretty serious guy. Right? And I grew up in a denominational church, and they had lots of do's and don'ts. And so I had lots of judgments I'd put on not only myself, but anybody else I needed to. And that's a shame. Instead, you can release blessing. You can bless folks. You can find the good in them instead of the wrong. You can always find bad in everybody, can I tell you? But you can find good, too, if you'll look. And if it's not, then start planting some. You know, I just notice you're really good at, and they go, oh, God. <laughs> nobody's ever given me a compliment ever. You could be the one that plants that seed that they turn around and go, man, maybe I do have value. Maybe somebody has seen worth in who I am. Guard your health. Get enough sleep, exercise. Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling and disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. If I was characterizing our culture today, those are two pretty good adjectives, crooked and twisted generation. I'm not saying the young people. I'm saying all of us. We live in a world today that's crooked and twisted. And the Lord's calling us to be lights in the darkness. And that light comes from being able to rejoice always um, and not walking around grumbling and disputing. Being blameless and innocent. You stay innocent. You know how you stay innocent? Keep your focus. Don't get distracted. I'm not even talking about with bad stuff. We can get distracted with good stuff too. Keep your focus. Guard your health. So in conclusion... All right, right on time. The secret ingredient really isn't secret. It's right there in the Scripture for us. All we have to do is do it. The word's clear in 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to read it again, 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You want to stand with me? I'll be real honest, when um, 
when Pastor Rich said, can you speak on Gratitude Sunday and speak on gratitude? And, you know, my first response was, well, that's not real glamorous. I'm going to speak on revival. I'm going to speak on the Holy Ghost. I want to speak, I mean, you know, that's just who I am. But um, the more I got into it and dove into it, I said, what can I tell those people that they don't already know? And there's nothing I can tell you you don't already know except for this. Knowing doesn't do any good unless we're doing. And so my prayer for us today, and maybe you need to, um, maybe you need to agree with somebody one-on-one. I'll ask when we start to close out, I'll ask some of our altar workers to be down here. If you need somebody to pray with you about something specific, they'll be here. But maybe you just need to say, um, like me, here's what I wrote down for myself. I've been spending too much time complaining. I acknowledge, God, your goodness in my life. I want my default to move from negative to positive and begin by faith adding that secret ingredient of thanksgiving into my daily life. I want to raise the value of others. When I come in contact with folks, I want to leave them better than I found them, even if it's just by a word that I speak. I want to trust God more and rely on my own experiences less because sometimes those experiences will lie to you. Well, that's what people think. That's what they, you didn't, they didn't really say that, but that's what they meant. Silence that voice. If you can't silence the voice, don't empower it by repeating it. Just begin to trust God. Let's pray together. Can we do that? Lord, I thank you that you love us so much. You loved us so much that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. While we are far off, you came after us. Lord, I thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your goodness to us, your faithfulness to us. I know it's easy when it's in church, but it's just we're overwhelmed in your presence and worship and just knowing, and now we're speaking. We're so thankful, God. You're a good God. You're a good God all the time. You're a good God all the time. Lord, I thank you in every circumstance, even the ones that I don't understand. You're working in those. You're working things together for my good. Lord, I pray for those that are here today and they don't know you. They don't have a resource to fall back into. They don't have somebody to run to in their time of need. They don't have the strong tower that you've promised to be that we can run to in our time of need. Lord, I pray that today they would say yes to you, that they would come forward and speak to one of these altar workers here in a minute and let them know, I need to make that decision today. But most of the folks here know you and they know you well. We would acknowledge that gratitude's important. We see today, Lord, that secret ingredient, that superpower of thankfulness and how it adds to when we pray. It adds to when we're seeking after the kingdom. It adds to when we're wanting to rejoice in the Lord. It adds to when we're anxious and we're trying to pray through it. It adds to because we're going to add to thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you that in all things, at all times, we want to reflect on you and be thankful. That you are greater Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Lord, I pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. And I pray that you'd go with the blessing of thanksgiving, the blessing of gratitude Sunday would rest upon you individually and upon your house. I pray as you pivot to go out the door, there would be a shift in the spirit and in the natural that's going to do you with power to walk in gratitude. I encourage you to write some things down so that you can run with them. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I could spend days recounting the faithfulness of God and never finish. You've been so good to us. 
And Lord, last, I close those that have been wounded, those that have been disappointed, those that legitimately have gone through experiences. I'm certainly not making light of those. Lord, I know that there are heavy burdens that we bear because we don't always understand why they happen or how they happen. But Lord, we just want to affirm again that we trust you. Lord, we're dependent on you to guard us and to protect us. We're coming up under the wings of your covering. And Lord, I pray that the healing balm of the blood of Jesus would go to those places. Lord, I pray that there would be healing in hearts. Lord, I pray that we would be able to let go of issues and circumstances. Lord, I cut soul ties that have attached ourselves to people and circumstances and events that would draw us back into negativity, that would draw us back into feeling defeated. Lord, I thank you that we are more than conquerors because we're in Christ Jesus. Not because we're bigger or stronger or able to do anything on our own, but because you are able. You are able. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you that we are free indeed. When you're free in Jesus, you're free indeed. Lord, I thank you for freedom coming. I thank you that you're retraining our words, that you're reprogramming our DNA, that we're going to be people of gratitude more than not. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Lord, we're so thankful. Thank you for family, for friends. Bless our folks as they go out this week. May they have safe and a good time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. If you need prayer, come. There'll be folks here. We'll see you next week.